Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash Cairo Business Mojo. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle Player, or MP3 player. Welcome to the Cairo Business Mojo podcast, where we deconstruct the methods, marketing, and mindset of successful business people and chiropractors from around the world. And now your host, Dr. Richard Day. Joining me today is Dr. Brett Heiser. He's a recent graduate, and he is going to share his insights, some of the things he's learned along the way since graduating. Welcome, Dr. Heiser. Good morning. How are you doing, Dr. Day? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing well. So bring us up to speed. And when again, when did you graduate? I graduated in April of 2015. So I moved out to Denver a little bit of, over a year ago. All right. And you chose to become an associate, correct? Yeah, I looked into my options. But uh, as you probably remember, chiropractic school doesn't exactly cover how to run a business. Right. So I thought it would be a good idea for me to get some experience and uh, learn a little bit about the, the business practices before I went and made a financial investment. Yeah, that's that's wise um, for sure because, yeah, you're exactly right. You come out of school and you have a whole lot of knowledge about chiropractic but not necessarily the business side of things. And so Right, and it's it's far different from what you would expect. Well, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, you chose the associate position um, and how has that been going? Um, how is that working for you? What have you learned? Those sorts of things. Yeah, well, things are going really well. Um, uh, summer and fall are busier times for our marketing efforts in the community. So uh, we show up to city fairs and 5 and 10K races and alternative health fairs. So I've been really busy on uh, building my patient base. Um, I think just this last month I reached about 190 visits for the month. So that's actually really good because I didn't start with any patients. Is this you personally? That's how many people you're seeing? Yeah, me personally. Uh, our clinic usually sees around 500 to 600 per month now. So it took about a year to get to that point. Well, now, is it a uh, insurance-based practice or is it cash only? How is it structured? We are a uh, cash-based primarily. We are out of network with insurance providers. Um, it's actually kind of hard to get into insurance uh, to be in network in Colorado. So cash seems to be the way everyone's going now. Wow. Um, I want to jump back before we get too far off base. So you talked about doing the, the fairs and the events and out in the community. Are there is that the main thing you're doing for marketing or are there other things as well? Yeah, that's uh, that's our feet on the pavement. That's our uh, efforts in the community, trying to keep our name out there, trying to get brand awareness, basically, you know, make sure our logo is the one that people associate with us. And um, but we also do a lot of social media presence. So I do Twitter, Instagram, we have a Facebook page, we have, uh, our website. So making sure that we have all of those up to date and working. <laughs> what would, so, what would you say is the age group, you know, median or mean, um, of the demographic you serve? Well, uh, probably my personal age group for my patient base is probably going to be in the 20 to 40 range. Um, my boss's, uh, uh, patient age group is a little bit older, so maybe 30 to 70. He, uh, he actually does a lot more wellness based patients than I do right now because he's been in practice since 2009. So he's got a pretty consistent base behind him and my, most of my patients are new patients. So hmm. working on getting to that point. So do you do any um, mailers or anything like that, or is it just the two things you've na named, the social media and, and the boots on the ground, so to speak? Yeah, we don't actually do any mailers. We don't do any of that stuff. Uh, the vast majority of our patients come from either referrals or from uh, our reviews on all of our social media websites. So mm -hmm. um, usually we show up in the top one or two for Google search in our area. So when somebody searches chiropractor in Ar Arvada, for example, we're right there at the top and then people get to see um, our, uh, we have actually a lot of reviews right now and we're working on getting more and that's like five stars everywhere. So, Well, that makes it easy when people are, <laughs> are liking the service you're providing. Right, right. And, you know, we, we try to make it uh, worthwhile to them to do a review. So we'll do like raffles and stuff like that all staying 
you know, legal. So, <laughs> right. Well, that's impressive. I mean, being that you weren't handed a patient base to begin with and you went and pretty much created something out of nothing. Am I, am I understanding that correctly? Yeah. So my boss did give me a, a couple of patients here and there. Um, and he would take a vacation here and there. So I would treat his patients, but the vast majority of what I see are through my own efforts. Who gets the walk-ins? I get the majority of the walk-ins because his schedule is more full. So I typically will get maybe 90% of them Mm. unless there's just a time that he has open that he wants a new patient. Well, let me ask you this. So in the year or or so since you've been there, what is the most valuable lesson you think you've really learned? Let's see here. The most valuable lesson I've learned is probably don't in under, you know, don't in any circumstance scare your patient. Don't use fear of their ailment to make a profit. You can warn them about the potential outcomes of not receiving treatment, but always focus on the positive and what they can do, even if it's on their own without you. Because my position has always been it's about the patient and them getting better first. Worry about the business second, because like I said, our clinic gets more Google search picks than our competitors do their reviews, and people love the low pressure to no pressure aspect of our care. Yeah, I think that that is a a huge thing. And I think it's also a differentiator, you know, since there are people out there who do have those tactics, when you can be one of the the ones who aren't doing that, one of the good guys, so to speak, I think that 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 word of mouth for you and what you're doing really exponentially grows. I actually just had a new patient this past week who is a 25-year-old female. She uh, went to a, a practice you know wanting to get help for her neck because she had some neck pain and they took an x-ray told her her neck was straight and she didn't have a curve they wanted her to sign up for three uh three visits a week for seven months and it was going to cost her around four thousand dollars and that if she didn't follow through with care then she would have an aneurysm by the age of 34 and i was yeah (laughs) i was just floored by this because i've heard the you know, the vast treatment plans and paying half up front. I've heard of all that stuff, but I have never heard anyone actually tell a patient um, the dire consequences of not getting treatment and not following through. So, Wow. I'll tell you what, when I hear those types of stories, it concerns me greatly. Uh, I don't think it's necessary at all. And I think perhaps... It's not science-based either. I mean, none of that statement has anything to do with, you know, science or research or... No. I mean, it's, it's awful. So needless to say, she will not be going there (laughs) again. (laughs) She was very happy that everything that I was talking to her was all positive things. You know, she is going to get better. There are easy and cheaper solutions to, um, work on it on her own and, um, what the benefits were if she did decide to get treated on a semi-regular basis or regular basis if she wants to. So leave it up to her. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad she found you. Uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, no evidence-based. Uh, it's coming from the doctor's position of fear, unfortunately, financial or whatever the driving factor is. But uh, I found that it's absolutely unnecessary. That is not how we built our practices. And more and more, I'm running into people who are doing it differently than what's mm-hmm. come before. And it is so refreshing to hear someone new out of school like yourself who's practicing a different way. Um, yeah, the game the game's changing, I think. It's it's much more service-based now than it ever has been. Um, you know, we come out of school with the clinic basis and you know what we expect for, you know, treatment outcomes and all that stuff, but people just aren't really in that mindset nowadays, especially with chiropractic. Yeah. Wow. So, so you have to change your tactics. Yeah, you really do. And I think as long as you are serving the patient with their best interests in mind, I think that that's, um, that's going to work. And I, I have got patients of mine who, um, you know, maybe they can't be a hundred percent compliant with the care plan, not because they don't want to get well, but they have real life. They travel, they do various things, but we both yeah, t- know time and money, right? It, right. Time for, and money for all of us. But we, uh, they understand that we're both going to do what we can when we can. Um, and it's not a high pressure situation at all. So. I love that story. Well, if you don't mind, I want to drill down into some of the particulars of your employment. If there's any aspect of this that you don't want to talk about, that's fine too. Um, but what is the structure of your pay? Is it a percentage base? Is it a salary? Is it salary plus percentage? Yeah. So right now I have a base salary 
And then I also have a uh, sliding bonus schedule based on total clinic numbers. So that way, my um, employer and I, uh, Dr. Levi Waite, is the guy who started my practice in 2009. Okay. And um, we wanted to work together. You know, it wanted to be a team effort. It wasn't just him doing his thing and me doing my thing. So we uh, did the bonus schedule based on total clinic numbers between the two of us. So as long as we work together and we increase our patients, then I get a bigger bonus. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's so it a, keeps both of us accountable. Yeah. Well, that's a great arrangement. I've seen everything from strictly percentage-based um, to um, a salary, and there's no bonus or anything like that. So uh, always an interesting question to ask, I think, because a lot of people who are getting regi- ready to graduate are considering all of these options. And it's nice to know what's out there and, and what could be out there or maybe even negotiated in. Um, into an offer. Right. And I did have to negotiate uh, both the salary and the percentage of the uh, bonus schedule. So don't be afraid to do that. Any of you new chiropractors about to graduate, or maybe you're already in practice for about a year and you're you know, going to renegotiate your contract coming up, don't be afraid to do it. Don't be afraid to ask for it. Because you'll be surprised what you get if you provide a good argument. Yeah, I, I think that's so true. I know from being an employer ourselves, if someone comes to us and proves their value to the organization, you okay. put yourself in a very good position to negotiate from strength. And um, absolutely, uh, I think that second time around, when you do go to negotiate um, and talk contract again, the employer is not going to want to lose you. <laughs> and so, right, exactly. And you, you hopefully you've uh, provided them with a reason in that time. <laughs> If you haven't, then uh, you might be out of luck. <laughs> right. <laughs> in the beginning, I had my, you know, what my personal um, standpoint was that I was able to do all the social media stuff for them because, you know, they didn't have a Twitter page. The Facebook page wasn't very active. So um, the website was a little bit out of date as far as information goes. So I went through and I updated all that stuff and not running all that stuff on my own. And it, you know, if, why pay two people to do it? So a lot of practices will pay a marketing director, mm-hmm. which I, you know, I started with no base patients. So I had a lot of extra time in the beginning to handle that stuff. Right. And now that I've got it going, it's a lot easier to maintain I think if uh, that's a great lesson for people, um, whether you're going to work for someone else and can add value to them in that way. But if you can look for a way to add value to a, a potential employer, that's of interest to them. Um, I know, especially for some graduates who don't have a lot on their resume, uh, I always tell them, go out and look how, talk about how you can add value to that person's practice. Mm-hmm. If you're into peds and they don't, aren't a peds based practice, maybe you could bring in that element. In your case, it was social media. So I think that's, uh, that's a great way to do it. And I think if you're starting out, you're exactly right. I always tell people, what do you got a lot of at the beginning when you have no patience, time or money? You probably don't have a lot of money, but you got a lot of time. So <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you know, leverage that. I will say that be, be careful not to like point out all of the negative things because you don't want to leave a bad taste in their mouth. Maybe ask them where do they see their weaknesses at and try to find a purpose, find a reason for them to hire you. Well, that's good advice. Let me let me ask you this. Looking back over the last year, is there anything you would have done differently? Let's see. Um, yeah, I would probably do a few things differently. Um, I would probably go and talk to other businesses in the community a little bit more and get out more. I tried that in the beginning, but got out got burnt out really quickly because it didn't have much of a result, and a lot of that was my communication skills. So when you come out of school, you have all of the clinic stuff, but being able to talk to talk and you come from a sales background. So you had that going for you right off the bat. Yeah, it does help. I can tell you that. But a lot of us don't have that. So a lot of us, uh, maybe some of us are book nerds and we were able to pass a test really easy. And some of us were really good with our hands. But usually the side that's weak is the patient communication or even just the business communication. So that's gotten a lot better for me, you know, over the even just the past few months as I've started to listen to more business podcasts and go to some business seminars. And um, maybe it's time for me to go back out on the (laughs) streets again and reassert my efforts. Was there any advice you would give a recent graduate or someone who's getting ready to graduate? Uh, I would probably say for those of you that are about to graduate, uh, you probably need to focus a little bit less on the technique you're offering and more on the successful business models because I've said this to 
a lot of people. Nobody cares about what technique you have to offer. You're going to get a far less amount of patients by offering a specific technique compared to providing the patient with a good experience in your office because that will outweigh anything else you do. At the end of the day, you want your patients to come to you regularly and not not because of injury, because they like you and they ha- they want to make your office a part of their daily or their weekly or their monthly rituals, their habits. Uh, yeah, I love what you're saying, especially the part about focusing on the business side. I think the only people that really care about a lot of letters behind our names are other chiropractors or techniques. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but they're not, our... I'm not, you know, I'm never saying to not focus on your own ability and your own skills and providing the patient with a, a great level of care. But as far as the marketing side of that, it's, it's a little irrelevant sometimes. So yeah, it's one piece of a larger puzzle and you need really to be firing on all cylinders across the mm-hmm. board. Mm-hmm. Well, Dr. Heiser, I really appreciate your time today. Thank you for sharing your insights with us and our listeners, and I I hope that uh, it helps some folks out there. I think it will. Absolutely. I appreciate the opportunity to be on here. It's uh, been a blast. All right. Can we check back with you again uh, down the road? Absolutely. I'm going to be making some changes pretty soon. So, All right. Well, we will check in with you then, and uh, looking forward to it. All right. You have a great day. You too. Thank you for listening to the Cairo Business Mojo podcast. Go to CairoBusinessMojo.com for show notes on today's episode and jump on over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and review if you enjoy the show.